Followed by most assessments, President Duterte's trip to Japan was a rousing success. He may not have met with Emperor Akihito, but he did work out a number of defense and trade deals with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his team. Here to talk us through the implications of those is Mr. Tomohiro Ando. He's the executive director of the Japan External Trade Organization. Mr. Ando, good to have you in the show with us. Uh, welcome. Um, you know, there were a number of deals that President Duterte worked out in Japan. Uh, my first question to you is here we're looking at uh, just a quick summary of that aircraft to patrol vessels, also a credit facility and some grants, some, uh, you know, something that made the rounds on social media, the banana export deal, which will of course uh, give the agricultural sector a huge boost as well as the egg production facility but overall was there anything that stood out for you uh, pardon? Could you was there anything in the in all the deals that they worked out that the Philippines worked out in Japan was there anything that was significant that caught your attention yeah yeah uh, in addition to them uh, I'd like to point out that, uh, that there was um, a discussion between the Japanese uh, economic Minister Mr. Seko and the Secretary Lopez of DTI. Uh, then, in that, they announced a statement telling that uh, the two countries are now reinforcing the uh, cooperation in the industrial development and economic development, uh, including the, uh, the automotive industry and other industrial development and uh, development of the promotion of MSME and the service industry, and the improvement of uh, business environment, and human resource development. And industrial production capacity is something the Philippines really needs yeah, at yeah, the yeah. moment. Yeah. I want to point out something. Uh, look, it's no secret that Japan has always been the Philippines' largest trading partner. Yeah. Um, also one of the biggest sources of aid. I'm taking a look at the net FDI inflows from year to date so far, Jan to July of this year. What we're seeing on this chart is that if we this uh, light green bar here on the left, by the way, is 2015 full year. The dark green bar represents January to July of this year. The, again, the trend here is very, very positive for Japan. We're already at about $867 million uh, so far this year. What does this chart, uh, what sort of message does this chart convey to you? Yeah, uh, in addition to this fact, I'd like to point out one more a very encouraging fact to us. Uh, the, uh, this one shows just uh, January, uh, January, July figure only in 2016. But I know that in 2015, uh, the annual figure of Japanese FDI inflow in 2015 was only a little bit more than this January, January July figure in 2016. So it's already surpassed yeah, it for yeah. this year. Um, it is apparent. It's still still a bit lower, but uh, that still lower only in seven months. So after this, of course, we can expect more investment. Therefore, uh, it is apparent that the Japanese FDI inflow into the Philippines will much, much larger than the previous year in this fiscal, in this 2016. Where is all this money going? Yeah, uh, some of the money goes to the uh, manufacturing industry. It, it is, uh, if we compare the figure in this uh, time duration, uh, it is the investment into the manufacturing sector is more than previous, uh, p the same period in the previous year. And the uh, much more money flowed into the non-manufacturing sector, including uh, financial sector. Um, when I you talk remember. manufacturing, what kind of yeah. manufacturing is this? Yeah, the large portion come to the uh, E&D sector, electric and electronic. Uh, as, so uh, semiconductors, yeah, yeah. And chips. The, uh, of course, some come to the uh, automotive-related sector uh, to uh, materialize that CARS program which started in this year. I mean, yeah. Toyota and Mitsubishi are already the two uh, approved players for the government's CARS yeah, yeah, program. Yeah, yeah, are yeah. we looking for a Japanese automaker to fill the third slot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Satrot, uh, regarding Satrot, I don't have <laughs> <laughs> information. It could be a possibility. Yeah, um, I, 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 I hope so. All right, let's take a look moment. at another chart. Yeah. Uh, foreign investment flows as well. If we compare Japan with the rest of our the, the Philippines' major trading yeah, partners, yeah. again, this data is from 20. 2006 to 2015, over the last yeah. nine years, we'll see that Japan obviously has a bit of a standing head and shoulders above the other countries. Uh, again, what does this say to you? Yeah. 
Uh, and like where do you where would you want to take this uh, this 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 where's, what's the end goal for Jetro in other words? Yeah, uh, I'd like to point out the fact that uh, if we pick up only 2015, the latest figure, uh, latest year, uh, Japan was not the largest investor uh, into the Philippines uh, from the viewpoint of foreign investment approval by the Filipino government. But uh, if we uh, pay attention to the cumulative figure in the past 10 years, Japan shared the largest portion among the foreign investors into the Philippines. And the, uh, I also would like to point out that the number of Japanese bases in the Philippines has become more than double, around 2.3 e times in the past 10 years. And it apparently showed the growing trend. And it can contribute to the uh, export manufacturing development as well as the human resource development through the uh, OJT right. in the Japanese manufacturing base. And uh, now I'd like to say that the domestic market of the Philippines is also very robustly growing and that fact can send a very positive, positive and attractive signal to the Japanese and investors. Ju just very quickly, Mr. Anu, you've been in the Philippines for a while. Do you find that there's more interest from Japanese investors in the Philippines now or before or is it pretty much the same? Yeah, uh, it is now. Uh, the, the Philippines is now sending a positive signal, as I told you, uh, because uh, we find that the economic growth in the Philippines is more driven not only by consumption, but by uh, the investment in the uh, durable equipment, by the investment. So it shows that uh, we can expect more development in the future, in the near future, and it will attract the Japanese investors more. And that is, of course, yeah. uh, an area that Japanese have deep expertise in. Thanks yeah, very yeah. much for your time today. Tomohiro Ando, Executive Director of the Japan External Trade Organization.